Hi folks. Today we start talking about a new um, topic, which is systems of equations. Um, we're going to focus on linear equations, so equations that don't have any squares in them, they just create lines whenever you graph them. But we need to recall some things from Algebra 1 because it's been a while since you've talked about systems of equations. So the topic today is solving systems by graphing. Now hopefully you recall from Algebra 1 that a solution of a system of equations with two variables like x and y is going to be an ordered pair x comma y. So on a graph that would be a point. So it's an ordered pair that is a solution of both individual equations. Meaning, for example, number one, that if the point negative two comma three were an ordered pair that was a solution to the system shown to the side, that means that negative two comma three, when substituted for x and y in each equation, has to work and be true for each equation. So number one and number two are examples that ask us basically to test it, to see if this point is truthfully a solution to the system of equations. So we've got to check each equation. Negative two is the x value and three is the y value. So they're going to go in here, here, and here, and here. So in the first equation, I have three times x, well x is negative two, plus two times y, well y is three, and it's supposed to be equal to zero. I don't know if it is yet, so I'm going to put a question mark. PEMDAS tells me that I do this multiplication and this multiplication before I add, so multiplying comes before addition. Three times negative two is negative six, two times three is six, and I know that negative 6 plus 6 is 0. So negative 2 comma 3 is a solution to that first equation, but we don't know for sure if it's a solution to the system, so we have to check the second equation. It starts out with x, which is negative 2, minus 6 times y, which is 3, and it's supposed to equal 20. So I do my multiplication before subtraction in PEMDAS, M, becomes, uh, M comes before S. So I have negative 2 minus 3 times 6, or sorry, 6 times 3, same thing, which is 18. And if I have negative 2 and I subtract 18 more, I'm going to get negative 20. Now negative 20 is not equal to 20, so that means that negative 2 comma 3 is not a solution to the bottom equation which means it is not a solution to the system. Uh, let's see, let me erase that, sorry. Negative two comma three is not a solution to the system because it doesn't work for both equations. So I'd like for you to pause the video and try example two, verify if the point is a solution to the system of equations that are shown to the right. Once you finish, go ahead and unpause and my work will be there th so that you can check. So pause your video and try example two. Now, if you substituted four for x and negative nine for y, you would find that the first equation, the point does give you the correct answer, and in the second equation that happens as well. And since it's a solution to each individual equation, that means that four comma negative nine is a solution to the system of equations. Now, again, from algebra one, hopefully you remember, and if not, it's okay, we're gonna relearn it today, that there are three possible solutions to a system of equations, three of them. The first possibility is that there's one ordered pair that's the solution to the system. Um, on a graph, the lines would intersect. Remember, to intersect means uh, to have a point in common, so to cross. The lines intersect and the solution is the point of intersection. So wherever those two lines are sharing a place in space, that's the intersection, that's the solution. Um, if your solution has one ordered pair, that means that the system is called consistent um, and it is independent. So it is a consistent, independent system. The second option is if you have no solution at all. On a graph, if you have no solution, the lines would be parallel. 
Remember that parallel means going in the same direction and never crossing no matter how long they go on. And remember, lines extend forever. So if the lines are parallel, then there's no solution, no place of intersection, and this is called an inconsistent system. Inconsistent, no solution. And then the third possibility is that you have an infinite number of solutions. So on a graph, the lines would coincide. I don't remember how to spell this stuff. The lines coincide. That means that the lines are the same. So one line is in the same place as the other line. They coincide. They're in the same place. This is a consistent system because there is a solution, but it's dependent. So the lines that coincide give you an infinite number of solutions. So hopefully you remember these possibilities. The process, let me scroll down, Ooh, down, not up, there we go. The process for solving, number one is to solve each equation for y. You want to isolate y so that you can graph. It's also possible that instead of isolating y, solving for y, uh, you might recognize that your, sol your uh, equations are in some other equation form that you can manipulate. Um, what I'm thinking of is getting your equations in the form y equals mx plus b, which is slope-intercept form, where you can identify the slope and the y-intercept. But it's also possible that you might identify an equation that's in point-slope form, and that gives you very direct information as well. But we're going to start out by solving the equations for y. After we solve for y, we're going to graph the y-intercept, and we're going to determine the slope for each line. Remember that the slope is in place of m in your slope-intercept form, and it's also typically a fraction. If it's not a fraction, you want to make it a fraction by putting your integer over 1, and that way you can rise a certain amount and run a certain amount. So after you graph your y-intercept and determine your slope, you want to look to find a point of intersection. If you can find a point of intersection, then that is your solution. All right, so I'm going to keep the process on the board. That way we can still refer back to it, but I'd like to move to example three. Example three shows us a system of two linear equations. Two because there's two equations, this one and this one. And I say that they're linear equations because there's no squaring, there's no um, exponents, there's no square rooting, there's nothing like that. Um, and so we just have two uh, very nice looking equations. Now the first step up here, let me move my, let's see, we're going to change some colors here. So step one is to solve each equation for y. Well I notice that in number three, this bottom equation, that's solved for y. Done. I notice that the top equation is not solved for, for y. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the equation down here. 8x plus 4y equals 24, and I'm going to solve for y using inverse operations that we've used throughout the beginning of this year and isolating the variable y. So I need to move this extra thing that is being added or subtracted with the y term. So I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides. I still have 4y on the left. I have 24 minus 8x on the right, but I'm going to reorganize that because I want my x term to be first, just like it is in slope-intercept form. So I have negative 8x, and then this 24 is positive, so plus 24. My final step in solving for y is to undo the multiplication that's happening by doing the inverse, dividing. And what I do to one side, I do to both sides, which means that I individually, with each term on the right, divide by 4. So I have 1y equals negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2 with the x variable, and 24 divided by 4 is 6. So now I've solved each equation for y, and I've put both of these equations in the form y equals mx plus b, slope-intercept form. Step 2. Step 2 is to graph the y-intercept and determine the slope for each line. So I'm going to start out with this 
equation that I just found in slope intercept form, my y intercept is 6. So I'm going to graph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And my slope is negative 2, but if I rewrite this as a fraction, it's negative 2 over 1. So that means that whenever I rise negatively, that is going down. So I'm going to go down 1, 2, and travel to the right 1. Notice how from left to right my line is going to be sloped down, which coincides with my negative number right here. So I'm going to go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. I keep going until I have no more place places to put my points. Come on, pin. And then I can also extend the line backwards, so I can go up 2 and back 1 if I wish. And I'm going to try something, and I'm not sure if you knew that this was an option, but if you go to Shapes, you have this Line tool right here, and you can graph a line. So I'm going to start here and go all the way through here. There we go. So it's a nice, pretty, straight line, and I can put arrows on the end to show that it increases forever in both directions. So it's an interesting tool to use. It's very helpful whenever we're solving systems. So my second equation, which was already in slope-intercept form, my y-intercept was negative 3. So on the y-axis, 1, 2, 3, negative 3. And my slope, again, was negative 2, so I make it negative 2 over 1. That means I rise down 2 and over 1. Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Now hopefully, something is kind of in the back of your mind about equations that have the same slope. So when equations have the same slope, we know that they're never going to cross each other. And what that means is that those lines are parallel. So let me go ahead and draw this second line here. Put my arrows in here. And I notice that these lines are never going to cross. So because both equations because both equations have a slope of negative 2, that means the lines are parallel. The symbol for parallel is two parallel lines, but I'm going to write it out for you. And if I go back to my options, if the lines are parallel, that means that there is no solution. So that's what I'm going to write, for example, 3, is that this system has no solution. I wasn't able to complete my third step up here, which was that the point of intersection is the solution, because there is no point of intersection. Now I'm going to scroll down to next problem. Remembering my steps in my process. So the first step in the process, there we go, um, was to solve for y in both equations. Now I mentioned that you may not have to solve for y in both equations because you might recognize that one equation is in a form that you can use. So this top equation, this is actually in point-slope form. Yay, point-slope form. This is something hopefully that you remember from Algebra 1. If not, if I write the equation, maybe you will remember. The format is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So, even though, oops, even though I don't need to solve for y in this equation, I still want to pick out some important pieces of information. For example, this is y1, this is x1, this is m. So a point that this line will go through is the point 2 comma 4. Remember that the formula has the minus signs, 
So if we have minus signs here, then x1 is a positive 2 and y1 is a positive 4. And then the slope is 3, and we can make it a fraction by putting it over 1. So even though I didn't have to solve for y here, I still get some very particular information that's helpful when I graph. Now the second equation, I do need to solve for y. 2x plus y equals negative 7. I don't have anything multiplying by y, but I do have that y is being added with 2x, so I want to subtract the 2x, and I'll be left with y equals negative 2x minus 7. Remember, I wanted the x term to go first because that's the way it is in slope-intercept form. So step number two was to do what with the y-intercept? I'm going to graph it, and you want to determine the slope. So let's go ahead and use this equation that we just found. The y-intercept is negative 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Sorry about that. There we go. Um, and the slope is negative 2. So I can write it as negative 2 over 1. Same as before, I'm going to go down 2 and right 1, making sure that my line is sloped down from left to right. And then after I get all of my points in, I can use my shapes tool, select a line, insert my line through all of my points, and then add arrows on to the end. So there's that second equation. The first equation, I don't have a y-intercept for, but I have a point, 2 comma 4. So over 2, up 4. Here's my point, 2 comma 4. And I have a slope of a rise of 3 and a run of 1. So a rise of 1, 2, 3, and over 1. I can also go backwards, down 1, 2, 3, and left 1. Oh, I notice something. I notice that that point's already on that line, which is good, because that means that whenever I use my shapes tool, and I go back in and I add my arrows, I'm going to see that I have a point of intersection here. That point of intersection is negative 1, comma, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 1, comma, negative 5. That's my point of intersection, which means that this system has one ordered pair for a solution where the lines intersect. It's a consistent system, and it's independent. So negative 1, comma, negative 5 is the solution. Wonderful. Okay. So I'm going to scroll down to our last problem for these notes today. And the last problem for these notes has fractions. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. So it does have fractions. We should not be afraid of these fractions. These fractions are really not that difficult to manipulate. Remember that step one is to solve for y, and I need to do that in both of these equations because neither of them are in a format that's easy to use. So I'm going to solve both of my equations for y. I'm going to show you how to do this one first, and then I'm going to leave you to finish the rest of the problem. Okay, but I do want to go through the fractions with you to show you it's really not that big of a deal that the fractions are here. So I have 1 third x plus 1 half y equals 1. I want to solve for y, which means I need to remove the thing that's being added or subtracted with the y term. That would be the 1 third x. So it's positive. I'm going to subtract 1 third x and subtract 1 third x. And those are going to cancel and become 0, and I'm going to have 1 half y equals, my x term goes first in slope-intercept form, so 1 third x, it's a positive 1. And then if you would like to, you may divide both sides by 1 half. I know you have calculators, I know you think that that's a probably a pretty easy way to do it. However, the way to undo multiplying by a half is to multiply by its reciprocal. The reciprocal, let me do this in a different color out here, the reciprocal of 1 over 2 is 2 over 1. 
or just 2. So if you multiply both sides by 2, and then you distribute this 2 to each of the terms, then you're going to end up with 2 times a half, which is just 1, y. The 2 gets multiplied by the negative 1 third, and it becomes negative 2 thirds x. Because remember, multiplying uh, whole numbers by fractions, you're just multiplying the numerator times the numerator and denominator times the denominator. And then finally, 2 times 1 is 2. Look how nice and easy that was. The fact that the fractions were there really did not make that big of a deal at all. So what I'd like for you to do is pause your videos. You already have one equation solved for y. You need to get the other one solved for y. You need to graph the y-intercept, determine the slope, and determine if you have a point of intersection. So pause your videos and work the rest of the problem. Check back for the answer. All right, folks, if you solve that first equation for y, you're going to get something that looks pretty familiar. And if you graph, you may be thinking, Miss Belsick, why do you only have one line on that graph? Well, the answer is because both of these equations are in the same place. And what is that called? The lines do what? The lines coincide. Because the lines coincide, that means that they're touching everywhere on the entire line. And the line extends forever in both directions. So there's not just one solution. There is an infinite number of solutions. Because those lines coincide. It's still a consistent system because we do have a solution there, but that system is dependent because those lines coincide.